This is the real origin story of Miles Morales. Miles Morales hails from the crime-ridden neighborhood of Hell's Kitchen. He was orphaned at a young age and taken in by his superstar boxer uncle that goes by the show name Battlin' Aaron Davis. As a surrogate father figure, Battlin' Aaron Davis pushes Miles to study so he could have a successful career and not struggle in life like he did. Miles, I need you to promise me something. Promise me that you will study hard and never resort to violence to accomplish your goals. But Uncle Aaron, I want to be a strong fighter like you. God damn it, Miles. Promise me. One fateful day, Miles and his uncle go for a morning stroll and come across an old man that's about to be isekai'd by an oncoming truck. Miles heroically dashes in to push the old man out of harm's way. However, the radioactive waste being transported by the truck spills and splashes into Miles' eyes. Miles! Miles! Speak to me! You nearly gave me a heart attack, man! Uncle Aaron, I... I can't see! Battling Aaron Davis finds himself in a financial pinch as his boxer paycheck isn't able to cover his nephew's hospital bills. He is approached by local mobster Simon Krieger in his time of need. So let me get this straight. You want me to lose my match, and you'll pay me a fuck ton of money? Well... What say you? Unbeknownst to Battlin' Aaron Davis, Miles starts to develop echolocative radar senses which allow him to see like a bat. Sometimes Miles forgets that he still needs to act like a blind person to not draw suspicion to himself. Miles, I think you forgot your walking stick. Thanks, Uncle Aaron. I was looking everywhere for it. <laughs> Miles starts to attend law school thanks to his uncle's winnings. There he meets his best friend and future business partner, Ganky Lee, as well as the elusive Gwen Stacy. Miles finds himself very attracted to the blonde enigma. Dude, you should totally ask her out. <sighs> I don't know, man. Having a disability probably doesn't give you much dating prospects. Uh, are you okay? Hey. <laughs> Friends? Friends. <sighs> there goes my best friend. After just a few months of dating, Gwen stops attending school unannounced. Yankee buys tickets to watch Battlin' Aaron Davis in an attempt to cheer up his best friend. Front row seats to see the great battle in Aaron Davis. Didn't you always wanted to watch your uncle in action? Yeah, who gives a shit about girls anyway? Girls before hoes. Hell yeah! yeah! On the day of the battle, battle in Aaron Davis noticed his nephew cheering in the audience. What is Miles doing here? Shit, I can't let him see me falling and pathetic. The match commences with a fierce exchange of punches. It reaches a point where Simon Krieger signals for Battle of Aaron Davis to throw the fight. But he instead deals the finishing blow! Thunder Fist! <laughs> With the fight over, Battle of Aaron Davis attempts to pack up and make a run for it. But he was confronted by Simon Krieger and his lackeys. Well, well, well. I'm afraid our deal is off. Aaron! No! The burning desire to seek justice is born into Miles Morales for many years to come. He fashions his uncle's remodeled boxing uniform and starts masquerading a masked vigilante in search of his uncle's murderer. I am the man without fear. I will avenge you, Uncle Aaron. Despite having developed super radar senses, Miles often finds himself getting mortally wounded due to his inexperience. Dude, you gotta stop doing this to yourself. Leave it to the police. And think about our law firm. Avocados at law, remember? I won't rest until I avenge my uncle. Okay, you're on your own, man. In a twist of events, Miles encounters his long-lost father, 
which now goes by the alias Stick. Uncle Aaron? No, it can't be. Oh, no. I'm his twin brother. Dad? Oh, by the way, this is Gwen. I believe you met, yes? Hi, Miles. Gwen? What are you doing here with my dad? And why are you dressed like a ninja? Shh. No questions. Only trust. Miles starts training with Stick and Gwen to work on applying his radar senses to various martial arts styles. Soon he gets involved in a messy ninjutsu murder cult affair. Now, listen carefully. The Hand is an ancient organization originating from feudal Japan. Why would anyone call themselves the Hand? Right, sorry. Continue. <clears throat> For thousands of years, the Hand has been in search of a powerful being to lead them in war against the Chaste. The Chaste? That's us. And as members of the Chaste, it's our job to stop it. What happens if we don't stop him? It is of the utmost importance that the Hand is not allowed to rise to power. Sounds like the Hand and the Chase just don't like each other to me. No questions! Only trust! Okay, okay, jeez. Miles continues to be absent from work for many days to come as he is busy fighting ninjas and recovering from sleep deprivation. Miles and Gwen go on a side venture to track down the mobster responsible for Uncle Aaron's death. They chased after Simon Krieger high and low, till they cornered him in a back alley. Do it, Miles, an eye for an eye. Thunder! Punch! It was at this moment where Miles awakens his dormant bioelectric powers. I'm turning him over to the police. Ugh, your no-kill rule is lame. I'm gonna honor my uncle's teachings. Dick leads Miles and Gwen into war with the bloodthirsty ninja cultists of the Hand Clan for the fate of New York City. Gwen sacrifices herself to save Miles in the heat of the battle. Gwen! No! Get up, kid! The fight isn't over! No! Man, I've had enough of this. I'm going home. Ahem. So you finally decided to come to work, did you? Ninja cults and ninja girlfriends are nothing but trouble. Can't say I have a clue to what you're saying right now. Genki, thanks for keeping the business going. And I'm sorry for everything. <sighs> I can't stay mad at you, bro. Avocados? Avocados. To the outside world, Miles Morales and Genki Lee are a formidable lawyer duo. Nightfall, Miles Morales fights crime from the shadows, solidifying his reputation as the fiery defender of Hell's Kitchen. The end.